Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. My name is Tuti Chakraborty and I'm an HPHR fellow. The name of my blog is Stroke Reimagined. Through my blog, I aim to raise awareness about this chronic life-changing disabling condition known as stroke and how it can be tackled, in, especially with a focus on low and middle income countries. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about a very personal and deeply life-changing experience for myself through this blog. So to give you a background of what I do, I'm an occupational therapist, mainly a neuro rehabilitation clinician, uh, working with many people with chronic uh, disabling neurological conditions. I recently completed my bachelor's degree, and ever since I started interning at the hospital affiliated to my institution, I have been exposed to a wide variety of people having a lot of neurological disorders. Uh, one of the main ones is stroke. Um, I have been dealing with a lot of patients and have been involved in the direct rehabilitation care and management of people living with stroke. So as a professional, uh, I, had, I have always been on the other end of the spectrum of stroke. However, on October 20th, 2020, my life changed forever and there was a complete role reversal in what I had been doing over the past couple of years. And this happened when my own father had a stroke. He had a right middle cerebral artery area infarct, and it was an ischemic stroke. Uh, there are two major types of stroke, which can definitely be fatalistic depending on which arteries are involved, what is the cerebral vasculature involved, which parts of the brain are affected. Uh, but most commonly, ischemic strokes are lesser severe forms and hemorrhagic strokes are more severe. And these are the two main common types of stroke that can happen. So my father had an ischemic stroke. Um, he has a history of hypertes and diabetes uh, and hypertension over the past 10, 15 years. And he also used to consume alcohol and um, was a smoker premorbidly. Uh, but over the past couple of years, he had been keeping it under control and had even completely stopped smoking. Uh, it was a very different and life-changing experience for me in the sense that it was really difficult for me to see my own father in that situation. And it was quite an unexpected thing that happened to me and my family because my father was already taking all medications and was on regular follow-up with the doctors. Um, he was constantly getting checkups and he was taking care of his health by exercising, maintaining a good diet. Uh, but I guess it's, that's just the beauty or I would say rather the, uh, the uniqueness of the human body and the human mind is that maybe once the damage is done, it is done and you cannot really go back. Uh, and that is what happened in my father's case. Uh, when my father had the stroke, uh, my mother actually did not inform me until the next morning. Uh, I am a single child to my parents and they have always been extremely loving and caring um, and extremely protective of me. And I think that is one of the reasons why my mother did not want to inform me because she did not know how I would react to the situation. Um, but honestly, I was a bit disappointed because I felt that you know, even though I was a healthcare professional and I had already completed my degree, it was not like I, I was still learning or I was still a student. Um, I still couldn't instill that confidence um, in my mother or in my parents. And that was also one of the learning lessons for me that I should have probably instilled a lot more confidence um, in them in terms of how they could perceive me. Um, as a healthcare professional, a full-fledged healthcare professional, and not just as um, their daughter or their child uh, who is oversensitive or over-emotional. So once I found out about my father's condition, thankfully, um, he, did, he was tranquilized early and he was uh, able to access medical care within two and a half hours of everything happening. And he was already tranquilized quite early. Uh, but unfortunately, that is not the case for most people in my country in India. So I completely, me and my family have been really privileged to have got that kind of social, monetary um, and societal support uh, in terms of being able to get to the hospital early. After my father was thrombolized, he was kept in the ICU under observation and his blood pressure was monitored. There was some mismanagement with his medications because he had not been continuing on his um, Echo spring, which is basically uh, a thinner, a blood thinner, and uh, we found out that it had been stopped for a while. 
and there was some confusion with that. Uh, however, it was again continued, and his hypertension medication was restarted, and uh, all of that was medically managed. And once he was stable, he was shifted out into the ward um, uh, where he was living. Uh, I rushed back home. Uh, with the earliest flight that I could find because I live far away across the country uh, from my parents. Um, once I reached, of course, my mind started working as a clinician and I started examining my father um, in whatever best way I could. But my mother told me not to pressurize him too much. And it was a very gray area for me. It was a difficult situation for me because I did not know what extent I needed to go to. And I think that's some uh, thing that we don't know where to set boundaries at being clinicians when it comes to our own family because we are so used to dealing with people um, or patients in an effic efficient and effective manner uh, when they are not related to us. However, you you completely have a change of roles and your roles completely break down uh, because I was not just viewing him as a clinician but as a daughter and I was seeing this as something that had happened to my family as opposed to somebody else's family. And that was quite a difficult um, circumstance to come to terms to. Um, so having said that, my father did have a really good prognosis and did have a really good recovery. And that was only because we come from a background of privilege and we had early access to rehabilitation. Uh, we had early access to all the healthcare services uh, which are required in order to make a person head, f healthy and fit again after having a stroke. Um, hence, I would like to say that me being a clinician definitely had an, uh, a major role to play uh, because I was able to guide my mother, I was able to guide my other family members in terms of uh, seeking out early rehabilitation care, whereas in, statistically speaking, most of the country uh, that I come from is still not aware of proper and adequate rehabilitation services and rehabilitation care after stroke, which is extremely imperative in order to assure early recovery and early and good prognosis, especially if intervened within the first six months of the onset of the stroke. Uh, also, because I am a clinician, I had knowledge about medications, I had knowledge about what kind of prognosis my father would have, and I was able to counsel my family in that way. However, this entire experience has given me a lot of insight as not just a clinician, but also as a human being into the uncertainties of life, into the challenges that we face. There were definitely, even though we are from a a socioeconomically sound background, there were challenges with us getting clearance in terms of our insurance money. Uh, and that really made me realize how broken the entire system is and how much uh, fixing is required. And it kind of strengthened uh, my resolution uh, to venture into policy advocacy uh, at some point of time later on in my career. Uh, and hence, that really motivated me um, and it gave me uh, also it gave me insight into the functioning of the healthcare system uh, in different parts of the country, um, how people respond to different challenges, uh, and that also kind of opened my eyes uh, to the different challenges that are consistently uh, present in, within the system and that need to be tackled. Uh, so having said all of this, uh, I would like to end by saying that it truly made me realize uh, the importance of being a primary caregiver or being a secondary caregiver for that matter, because even though I was there with my parents, I still had to go back to work after a certain point of time. I could not extend uh, a lot in terms of like acquiring my leaves and things like that. So I had to manage my work as well as uh, manage other engagements that I had, um, as well as be there for my family and be present. Um, the primary caregiver, of course, was my mother. And so it gave me a lot of insight into the family dynamics that come into play when you have to deal with a person that has had a stroke or uh, a neurological disorder. And uh, I'm really honestly very happy and very glad and very privileged and very blessed uh, to say that my father has had a really good prognosis and he has been able to join back to his work. He has been able to come back to almost very normal level of functioning as he was before. 
Um, the only deficits that remain are in terms of his perceptual abilities because the a region or the area of the brain that was impacted has some control over perceptual abilities and some amount of slurriness in his language and in his speech when he talks but that's only when he tries to talk really fast and you know goes back to his normal pace of talking but when he actually slows down his pace um, he is able to to clearly have a conversation uh, with everyone and everyone is able to understand him very clearly um, so it was definitely a major challenge for me and my family, uh, especially for my father, who had who is really a man of very less words uh, and who is filled with so much of compassion. And he's so concerned about his family and to see him um, go through that entire thing and worry about his family uh, was also a very difficult phase for myself and my mother and definitely even more difficult um, for him. Um, so just to end, I would like to say that this experience not only equipped me to become more resilient, to become more uh, determined in my purpose, it also for strengthened my sense of purpose uh, to someday venture into science policy making as a long term goal. And my immediate or short term goal is to venture into uh, research um, into stroke as well as other neurological disorders. Uh, in order to understand the neural underpinnings or the neural basis of the brain functioning. Uh, and yes, this experience taught me a lot of things. Uh, there were some really bad days, really horrible days, emotionally, uh, mentally, physically, but I'm glad that uh, it has been able to teach me significant life lessons. And going forward, uh, we can take that in our stride, not just me, but all of us as a family. Thank you so much for listening and hopefully uh, this really personal um, vlog has inspired you to know more about stroke and understand and recognize the early signs of stroke and never ever take your health um, and your life for granted. Um, I can understand that it might be difficult at times. Uh, I would be a hypocrite if I said that I'm also completely health conscious, I'm not. Uh, we, so we tend to get absorbed with our own lives and day-to-day -day routines so much that we don't tend to regard so much for our health. Um, but I am trying to make small ways of change in my life, in my lifestyle. And I think that attitude is what really matters and that determination to change is what really matters. Uh, so one of the major things to avoid a stroke is to have a good and healthy lifestyle. Uh, to reduce the amount of stress, to reduce the amount of improper food intake, and to strengthen your diet patterns. And hopefully this is something that you can consider doing in your life as well. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day ahead. Take care.